Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, we're going to create a calculator program using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's get started. All right, let's do this thing, everybody. We have a lot of buttons to create, but we'll need a container. I will create a div element. The div element will have an ID of calculator. Within this div element, we'll create an input element. The input element will have an ID of display to display the numbers that we type in. I don't want somebody to enter in some text for the display. I would like this display to be read only. I will add the read only property. So we can't type in anything even though I'm trying. I will create a nested div element that has an ID of keys for all of the keys. We need to add a lot of buttons. We'll begin with the first. I will create a button element the text on the button will be plus. I will set the on click attribute of this button to be a JavaScript function. We still need to define this function. Eventually, we'll create a append to display function. We have one argument to pass into this JavaScript function, a character of plus. That's our first button. Let's copy this button and paste it 13 additional times, if I counted right. Okay, the second button will be 7. The character we're passing in is 7, followed by 8, 9, minus 4, 5, 6, Asterisk for multiplication, 1, 2, 3, forward slash for division, then 0. And here are the new buttons. I miscounted. We need to add one more. A dot for a decimal. Now we need an equals button. We're going to arrange that a little different. Let's create a button with the text of equals. The on click attribute of this specific button is going to be calculate. Then we need a button to clear our screen. The text on this button will be capital C for clear. The on click attribute of this button is going to be clear display. And that is all the buttons we'll need. So let's save everything and let's go to our CSS style sheet. I'm going to zoom back to 100%. First, let's style all these buttons. I will select all buttons. For each button, I will set the width to be 100 pixels. The height to be 100 pixels, so they're even. I would like rounded buttons. I will set the border radius property to be 50 pixels, so they're circles. Let's remove the border. Border none. I'll change the background color of the buttons. Background dash color. I'll use HSL values. I'll set the lightness to be 30%, so they're darker. For the text of the button, I will set the color to be white. For the font size, I will set that to be 3 REM, set the font weight to be bold. Then when I hover my cursor over one of the buttons, I would like my cursor to be a pointer. Cursor, pointer. Now we have to arrange these buttons properly. Let's select the ID of keys. Keys is a div element that's containing all of the buttons. This element. All of the buttons are within. To arrange these buttons in a grid, we can set the display property to be a grid. For this calculator, I would like four columns. To do that, I will set the grid template columns property 
to be, we'll use the repeat function of CSS. I would like four columns. Then to arrange these buttons evenly, you can use one FR. FR stands for fractional unit. One FR indicates that each column should take up an even amount of space. So now we have columns of four. If I were to set this to three, we would have columns of three. But I'm going to use columns of four because I would like all of the operators on the left hand side. I'll set the gap to be 10 pixels. That is the gap between each of the rows. Then I'll add some padding of 25 pixels. That's padding around the keys. Let's select the ID of calculator. I'll add that to the top to keep everything organized. With our calculator, I will select a font family of Arial with a backup of sans serif. Let's pick a background color for the calculator. I will select something darker. I'll set the lightness to be 15%. I'll round the corners of the calculator. Border, radius, 15 pixels. The corners of the calculator are smooth now. Then I will set a max width of the calculator to be 500 pixels. If any elements overflow, I will set that to be hidden. This is mostly for our display, if we have a very long equation. All right, next, let's select the display. Right now, it's kind of small. We are selecting our ID of display. Let's set the width to be 100%. I'll add some padding of 20 pixels. For the text of the display, I will set the font size to be 5REM. Let's text align left. I'll remove the border. Border, none. And I'll change the background color. I'll just copy this property because I'm lazy. Let's increase the lightness to 20%. Then we'll select the body of our document. I will remove all margin, margin zero. I would like the calculator to be in the middle of my window. Right now it's in the top left corner. If you would prefer it up here, you can leave it as is. I will set the display to be flex for Flexbox. Justify content in the center for a horizontal alignment. For a vertical alignment, we can set align items to be center, but we do need to increase the height of the body of the document so it's 100%. I will set the height to be 100 VH for 100% of the viewport height. That should place the calculator in the middle of the body of our document, both horizontally and vertically. For the background color, I'm going to decrease the lightness slightly. For the background color, I will set the lightness to be like 95%. Okay, let's go to the bottom of our CSS style sheet. When I hover over one of these buttons, I would like to increase the lightness. So with all buttons, with the hover pseudo class, change the background color so the lightness is 40% instead of 30 now these buttons light up when we hover our cursor over one of the buttons. Now when I click on one of the buttons, I'll increase the lightness further so it flashes. We are selecting the active pseudo class now. Let's take our background color property, increase the lightness to 50%. When we hover over a button, it lights up. When we click on it, it flashes momentarily. So with all of these operators, I would like all of these operator buttons to be a different color. I'll pick orange. We're going to give each of these buttons a new class. Let's head back to our HTML file. Beginning with the plus button, I will set the class equal to operator-btn for button. 
So let's copy this class, paste it for our minus button, multiply button, divide button, and the clear button. Now we will select the class of operator btn for button. Let's change the background color. I'm going to set the background color to be orange. I've already pre-picked a color. When I hover my cursor over one of the operator buttons, I would like the color to be a lighter orange instead of gray. Let's take our operator button, access the hover pseudo class. I'll increase the lightness to 65%. Then, when I click on one of these buttons, I would like the lightness to increase further. With the Operator button class, with the Active Pseudo class, increase the lightness to 75%. So when I click on one of the Operator buttons, it's going to flash momentarily. Alright, and that is all the HTML and CSS that we need. Now we just need to add functionality. Let's go to our JavaScript file. For our JavaScript file, there's not a lot we have to write. First, we need to get the display element. So what was that ID? Display. Const display equals document dot get element by ID, get the ID of display. We have three functions to create. A function for append to display, calculate, and clear display. These three functions. Function append to display. There is one parameter, input, because we are passing in a character when we call this function. Then we have a function to clear display, then a function to calculate. We'll begin with append to display. All we're going to do is take our display, this element, access its value, append it with plus equals our input. And let's see if this works. 7. I forgot to change the font color of the display, so let's do that. Within our display element, let's set the color to be white. Okay, that's much better. 7 point one three plus five equals okay we know that that works when I click on the clear button I would like to clear this display let's access our display element access the value property set it equal to an empty string three point one four one five nine when I hit clear it should clear the display Lastly, we have calculate. Let's take our display elements value property, set it equal to. Now we're going to use the eval function. The eval function takes an expression such as 1 plus 2 plus 3 and evaluates it and gives a result. It's kind of like it's its own built in calculator, so to say. Evaluate the value within our display. Display.value. So if I add 3.14 plus 1.01, I'm given a result of 4.15. Now, for some reason, if we get an error, for example, 7 plus equals, well, we have a problem. Let's go to our console. We've encountered an uncaught syntax error because we never finished our equation. In the last lesson, we learned about error handling. This is dangerous code. It can cause an error. Let's surround this code with a try block. We will try this code and catch any errors that happen. So we need a catch block now. Catch any errors. We will change the value of the display to equal some text of error. All right, and that should work. 3.14 times equals that results in an error. We can clear it 
and then start over. What's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4? That would be 10. All right, everybody. So that is a calculator program you can make using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Impress your friends.